Hypertension. Hypertension is blood pressure above normal range with systolic greater than 140 millimeters mercury or diastolic greater than 90 millimeters mercury. Hypertension affects more than one in five people in Canada and greatly increases your risk for conditions such as atherosclerosis, congestive heart failure, stroke, and myocardial infarction. Over time, a thickening of the left ventricle will occur, further weakening the heart. In today's visit, Megan, a student nurse, is following up with Tristan regarding his blood pressure. So your blood pressure is 165 over 100. This is your third visit and your blood pressure is still the same. Uh, last visit, we talked about some of the risk factors, including your weight and your salt intake. Have you considered making any of these changes to your lifestyle? I've been trying to address some of the changes, but I'm finding it very hard to fit into my lifestyle. Risk factors. Modifiable risk factors include smoking, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, chronic stress, and diet. More specifically, diets that are high in sodium and cholesterol or low in fiber and potassium have been shown to increase risk for hypertension. Non-modifiable risk factors include family history and age-related changes in blood pressure. So now that we've talked about some of the risk factors for hypertension, I want to make sure you understand what the disease actually is. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to discuss some of the normal physiology with you. That would be great. I'd really appreciate that. The normal physiology of blood pressure. There are several mechanisms that serve to regulate blood pressure. One of the primary mechanisms, which we will discuss in detail, is the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Other mechanisms include baroreceptors, chemoreceptors, and vasopressin, otherwise known as antidiuretic hormone. The renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system is activated in response to a decrease in blood pressure, extracellular fluid volume, or extracellular fluid sodium concentration. It can also be activated by an increase in sympathetic nervous system activity. When the system is activated, the kidneys release the enzyme renin. Renin enters the bloodstream where it converts the inactive plasma protein angiotensinogen produced by the liver into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 travels to the lungs. In the lungs, angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by the angiotensin converting enzyme. The activation of angiotensin 2 has several results. First, Angiotensin 2 causes vasoconstriction, which increases blood pressure. Second, angiotensin 2 increases sodium reabsorption by the kidneys. This also causes water retention, which increases extracellular fluid volume and thus increases blood pressure. Third, angiotensin 2 stimulates the release of aldosterone by the adrenal glands, which enters the bloodstream. Aldosterone increases sodium retention, which leads to water retention, once more increasing extracellular fluid volume and raising blood pressure. Under normal conditions, when sodium levels and extracellular fluid volume reach a certain level, a negative feedback loop will be activated, lowering blood pressure. So because we've caught this early, we can manage your condition. Often people might not come in until they have symptoms, but these symptoms don't usually show themselves until the disease is terminal. Symptoms and management of hypertension. Symptoms of hypertension include nosebleeds, dizziness, shortness of breath, anxiety, and facial flushing. Management options for hypertension include lifestyle modifications such as reducing salt intake, the cessation of smoking, and increasing physical activity. It is recommended that patients with hypertension ingest no more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day and participate in 30 to 45 minutes of moderate to intense physical activity four to seven times per week. Pharmacologic treatments may be prescribed by your doctor. These include thiazide diuretics, beta blockers, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin II receptor blockers, and renin inhibitors. You have a good understanding of hypertension now? I feel like I have a pretty good understanding, but I'd like to go through it one more time for clarification. In summary, hypertension is chronic elevated blood pressure with systolic over 140 millimeters mercury or diastolic over 90 millimeters mercury. Proteins. Proteins involved include renin and angiotensin, as well as the angiotensin-converting enzyme. Other proteins include transport proteins required for the distribution of factors involved in regulating blood pressure. Cell membranes. 
In order for the regulation of blood pressure to occur, many factors need to move in and out of cells. This involves crossing the cell membrane. Homeostasis. Homeostasis is disrupted in hypertensive patients as their blood pressure is elevated above normal ranges. The cause of hypertension is not well understood, but a variety of risk factors are known. One example is a high sodium, low potassium diet. This indicates that sodium and potassium levels in hypertensive patients may be abnormal, causing an increase in extracellular fluid volume and disrupting homeostasis.